Welcome to Hometown Happenings. I'm Carol McCarthy, and I'm here today with Linda Widowich and a friend. And we are going to talk about uh, training our little furry friends uh, to be better companions. Uh, pets play a big role in our lives, and sometimes uh, pets or trainers or people who own pets aren't trained very well. <laughs> and Linda is here today, and we're going to talk about the Canine Good Citizen program. It's a 10-step program uh, that uh, the owner and the pet go through. And uh, you know, if people are considering uh, maybe getting a pet or have uh, a puppy in their lives, uh, a good time, to, this would be a good thing for them to tune into. Or if you have a pet that maybe is a little bit of a menace <laughs> to society, <laughs> it's a good time to tune in as well. That's true. Uh, it doesn't matter the age of the dog. Training is always beneficial. Uh, people will call us and ask, him, can you do something with my dog? He's three years old and I haven't had him through any classes. And I say, absolutely. It's like with people. The uh, the longer a habit has been ingrained, the harder it is to retrain. But we do a lot of behavior modification on the older dogs, uh, maybe not eliminate the problem completely, but certainly make it much more controllable. Mm -hmm. Now, Linda, how long have you been training animals? Forever. Okay. <laughs> uh, I got my first pony when I was two, and I've always had animals in my life. Mm -hmm. And I've always been interested in working with them. Training is not just training the animal. It's a team effort. It's both of us, mm -hmm. the dog and the person, the horse and the person, uh, even the kids that show sheep and pigs and rabbits in 4-H. Uh, you can tell the kids that have worked with their animals, and there's a bond there. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about this uh, Canine Good Citizens program, and it's a program that you found to be um, very well received by uh, owners and pets. Yes, it is one of my favorite classes to teach, uh, and I think if a person is not competing, is not uh, into showing, uh, I think this is probably one of the most important classes that they can take because it makes the animal and the person better citizens in the canine world. Mm -hmm. And with so many pets, I mean, I, I have a pet myself and we go out walking three times a day mm -hmm. and we see other pets out. I mean, it's, it's a given that pets are all over and people are out walking their pets, you know, whether they're well behaved or not, that's the, that's the question. But it's, it's a lot easier to get your pet out and have more, a more enjoyable experience for you and the pet if your pet is well trained. That's true. And people make the assumption, particularly first-time pet owners, well, my dog is friendly. She likes everybody. Or my dog is well-behaved. He would never attack anybody. So they assume that other dogs behave the same way. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's an assumption that gets a lot of animals into trouble and gets a few of them hurt. Uh, I have a yellow lab who's a wonderful dog. Uh, I compete with him, I hunt with him, I use him as a demonstration dog in, in the classes that I teach. But he will, if a strange dog comes up and sticks his their nose into his personal space, dogs have personal space just like people do, and if he feels somebody's intruding on his personal space, if I'm not there to correct him, mm -hmm. he will snap. Mm -hmm. So people think, well, you know, my dog's on a leash, I'll let it out to the end of the leash, and it can run up and meet your dog. Not necessarily a good program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so animals are, even as you say, as well-trained as animals can be, there is still, you know, animals are animals, so they will snap. They are. Vision. But this also helps you to recognize that. Yes, and to prevent it. Mm -hmm. And I like to use the, the mindset of, I like to set my dog up to succeed. Mm -hmm. I don't like to give him the freedom to get into trouble. Mm -hmm. I like to help him succeed by setting rules, setting parameters uh, for both my dog and myself. Now, I do have dogs that are very friendly, gregarious and outgoing. Like Katie here, uh, any dog can come up to her. Mm -hmm. Any child can come up to her. That's not an issue mm -hmm. with her temperament. All right. Linda Widowich is my guest today on Hometown Happenings, along with Katie, who is uh, passed out here. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to go through uh, some of the 10 steps of training for the uh, Canine Good Citizen program after this. Welcome back to Hometown Happenings. Carol McCarthy here with Linda Widowich and Katie. And we are talking about training uh, a dog, uh, canine good citizen training, which Linda uh, works with dogs. Uh, 
through your, your class. And there's also a book that you can get. We'll talk more about that uh, near the end. We'll give you some more information on how to either uh, get involved in a class or uh, check out the book. But Linda, let's talk about this uh, canine citizens uh, training, uh, canine good citizens training. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's sponsored by AKC, which is probably the, the best known kennel club in America. And it, they have set 10 criteria that if your dog can pass, they will award you a certificate that your dog is a canine good citizen and it becomes important for people who have issues with getting insurance on a dog. Okay. Katie is a German Shepherd and some people view that breed as a bully breed. Mm -hmm. they, one of the best working dogs out there. And Katie is being trained as a lead dog yes. and she would need this training to go on to further her. Yes, it's okay. like a prerequisite mm -hmm. that she go through this program. Uh, she will be eyes for someone. She belongs to leader dogs for the blind. Okay. So that's her mission. There are 10 steps that, that the dogs are evaluated on. The first one is accepting uh, a friendly stranger. And I'd like okay. you to just walk up and okay. shake my hand. Alrighty. Katie, stay. She can do no more than show casual interest in you. She mm -hmm. can't jump up and get in between us or try and lick you and greet you or okay. run away. Okay. She has to just sit calmly. The next step is accepting petting. Would you like to pet my dog? Yes. Go ahead. Maybe. Teddy, you can visit. Hi. You notice she just sits quietly and waits for the attention to mm -hmm. come to her. She doesn't reach out to you. Uh-uh, leave it. The next step is appearance and grooming. So I would like you to do just a brief exam. I'd like you to look at her ears, pick okay. up a paw, and then use that brush and brush her a little bit. <laughs> okay. Let me look at those ears. Oh. That's your paw? Give me paw. Oh, oh. <laughs> she says, I'll lay down. You can oh, have that. Nice paw. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead okay. and brush her a little. I brush you? Katie, do you want to stand for this? It'll make it easier for Carol. Or you can sit. That's okay. <laughs> good girl. That's yeah. a good job. Good girl. <laughs> the fourth step in the test is a little hard to demonstrate in here. It's out for a walk, and it's showing that the dog will walk on a loose leash. If I'm steering the dog, it's not fun for her, mm -hmm. and she doesn't learn anything. You see, she's looking at me like, oh, this isn't <laughs> fun. But if I let the loose the leash be loose, let it hang down as she walk with me. It's a much more enjoyable time and it shows that the dog is much more under control. Mm -hmm. Okay, So the next thing that we test is sitting and staying. Okay. Okay. Katie, you, not, not quite yet, come here. Katie, sit. Yes, good girl. Now we can do the down. Katie, down. All the way. Katie, down. Good girl, stay. Now, if we were testing, I would leave her in this position and I would walk 20 feet out away from her. Katie, stay. At the evaluator's command, I would come back. Good job, good girl, good girl. The next step would be to go out 10 feet away from her and call her to me. And we don't have room to demonstrate that in here, but she loves to come. One of the things that we teach our service dogs, particularly dogs for the, for the blind, because they can't see that dog coming in, we teach them to come in and make contact, to touch, okay? Uh, we cannot do walking through the crowd. We don't have a crowd mm -hmm. here. Uh, audio and visual distractions, bouncing a ball, pushing medical equipment, mm -hmm. uh, tipping over a chair, making a sharp noise. Again, we're looking for a dog that will just stay. And the last thing that we do is a supervised separation where I hand my dog to you and I leave the room. Okay. okay. And this is all a part of a canine good citizen training and it's something that you do. Uh, you've been doing this for quite a while and if, if people want to find out more information about this, uh, there's a book out there or they can just uh, you know go on the web and look for a location near you. Or check with your local veterinarian because they know what classes are being taught and by whom. All right. Linda Widowich on Hometown Happenings along with Katie today. Uh, let's get out there and train those dogs well. For TV3, I'm Carol McCarthy.